Okay, hits those points and goes upwards, right? We know it's going up because A is positive, so we know it's going to be facing up. All right, let's go through one more here. First thing I'm going to do is identify A, B, and C. So I've got A is negative 2. No B value again. And C is positive 3. All right. Um, and so then I can go ahead and find the axis of symmetry, the AOS, using our um, formula here, AOS x equals negative b over 2a. That's going to be negative 0 over 2 times negative 2. And of course, since 0 is in the numerator, that's going to turn into 0 again. And so my axis of symmetry is 0. And so once again, this dotted line that goes right down the middle here through 0 okay, on my x-axis so that's the axis of symmetry. Now we can go ahead and find the uh, vertex. So find the vertex here. All right. So remember the vertex, we're going to go back to my original equation. y equals negative 2x squared plus 3. And I'm going to punch in my x value for x. So I get y equals negative 2, punch in 0 here plus 3. Well, that's just going to turn into 0 plus 3, which just gives me a y value of 3. And so then my vertex is going to be 0 comma 3. All right. And so one more time, I took my x value that I found in the previous part, and I plugged it into my original equation for x. And I found the y coordinate of the vertex, which turns out to be 3. And so we have 0 3 for the vertex. So I'm going to go there, which would be right there on my graph, and put my point. Okay, we can find the y intercept super quick and easy. Remember, the y intercept is always just the c value. So in this case, it's going to be 0, 3. All right, but we already knew that because remember, if there's no b value, then the y intercept and the vertex are the same. All right, but we need some more points, so I'm going to go ahead and make a table here. Okay, so let's say x, y. I can pick whatever I want for x. I'll choose 1 again. And then I'm going to plug this into my equation, y equals negative 2. And then I'm going to do 1 squared plus 3. So this becomes, let's see, negative 2. Well, 1 squared is just 1 plus 3. And then that's going to be negative 2 plus 3, which gives me positive 1. So I'll put that in my table. I've got this point here at 1 comma 1. So I'll go to my graph. 1 comma 1 is right there. Notice I have a matching point that's going to be on the other side of my dotted line, my axis of symmetry, right? Because if there's one to the right, there's also one to the left. Okay, because these are symmetric graphs. And then I can go ahead and sketch my full graph here. Which is going to be upside down because the A value is negative, right? Facing downwards. And so we end up there. All right. Okay, I'm going to head into uh, the, the final page here. This is kind of long, it's be a two-part video here. So into the last page of this note sheet here, we'll talk about domain and range, things that we've mentioned before. The domain is how wide does my graph get? Right, this is the x values. So which x values are in my graph? And the range is going to be how tall does my graph get? And that's going to be the y values. Okay, so they've got it highlighted here. I'll zoom it in real quick. The domain, talking about how wide my graph gets, 
okay, and the range, talking about how tall my graph gets. So the interesting part about these parabolas is notice that they are constantly getting wider and wider and wider and wider. So the domain is going to be all real numbers because e even if they're facing upwards, they're always getting wider and wider and wider. Right, so they're going to hit all the x numbers. The range is not so simple, right? Because it's going either up or down, so it's not going to hit all of the y values, right? It might hit all below, or it might hit all above, but it's not going to hit all of them. Let's talk about how to identify that. So first, they're going to have me identify the vertex. Um, the vertex for this first one is right there, right? In this case, it's at the bottom, which makes it a minimum. And it's at the point 0, negative 3. The domain is going to be all real numbers. All real numbers. And that's going to be the case for every single parabola because they're getting wider and wider and wider. The range, however, is going to be a little bit different. So notice the bottom of my graph is here at negative 3, and then it goes up from there. So I'm going to say y is greater than or equal to negative 3 because it hits negative 3 and then it's going up. So then it's always greater than negative 3 and never goes below that. Moving over to letter B here. Vertex this time is up here at positive 3 at the top of my graph, which makes it a maximum. The domain is all real numbers, so they might write that as a compound inequality, which put x from infinity and greater than negative infinity. So just another way to write it, right? So from negative infinity to positive infinity, the x has got to be somewhere there, right? which means it's all the numbers. And in this case, we're going down. So I'm going to say y is less than or equal to because it's going down from positive 3. So that's the top, right? So it's less than positive 3. And then we'll go here to letter C. Okay, uh, the vertex for this problem is at negative 1. It's at the bottom, which makes it a minimum. We've got all real numbers for the um, domain. So it goes from positive infinity down to negative infinity. And then the range for this one is going to be y is greater than because it's going up and it's going up from negative 1, right? So it's all the numbers above negative 1 greater than or equal to negative 1.